Um, thank you, Yasha. That was fantastic. And, and thank you also, Geraldo, for the translation. Um, we have um, a final speaker of the day before the, the um, Q&A and then the screening later on. And I feel he also almost needs no introduction. Um, we've invited Guy Brett to respond to the conference as a, as a whole and just to bring some comments and thoughts on um, what has been discussed over the last two days. Of course, Guy is a critic, curator, and lecturer on art based here in London and has published widely in the international art press and in Britain and has published books such as Brazil Experimental, Arte Vida um, in, 19, in 2006, Carnal of Perception, Essays in 2004, Exploding Galaxi Galaxies, The Art of David Medalla in 1995, and um, was curator of Georges van Tongelu, A Longing for Infinity, at the Museo Reina Sofia 2009, the Sildo Morelles exhibition here uh, with Vicente de Doli in 2008, Force Fields Phases of the Kinetic um, in 2000 at the Hayward Gallery, and Transcontinental, nine Latin American artists at the Icon Gallery in 1990. And of course, Elio Otisica at the Whitechapel Art Gallery in London in 1969. And although he says he didn't curate it, the Mira Chandel exhibition at Signals Gallery in 1966. So, Guy. I've, I've, I've learned an awful lot in this conference. Um, both. Um, about Mira Schindel's art and about Mira Schindel herself and her story. Um, it made me want to try to actually um, recapture uh, my, my first contact with her and her work. Um, I wanted to try and um, remember what, what if, what. Uh, what effect it had on me, and um, which is difficult after the passage of so many years. But the first work of hers I saw, the monotypes, um, I, was, I was amazed by their, by their bareness. I don't think I'd seen any work which was so abbreviated and so simple, apparently. Um, and it was not simply um, the line, but it was the way the line was suddenly absorbed into the paper and taking on a kind of material quality itself. And um, I became, I had heard about Mira from Sergio Camargo, the sculptor, Brazilian sculptor living in Paris. In fact, um, I went to visit him with Paul Keeler, the director of Signals, in 1965, I think it must have been. And uh, Camargo was making his uh, white wood reliefs at that time works which also I, I like very much. And we got into conversation and he said, you must try to uh, go to Brazil and see uh, what artists are doing there. Something really exceptional is taking place and I think you would be very interested in it. Um, and I was working at that time as um, art critic for, for the Times in London. So I managed to get them to send me to the Biennale in Sao Paulo in 1965. Uh, again, I was traveling with Paul Keeler. And on that occasion, we met Elijah Clark and Elio Tisica and uh, Mira Schendel, particularly, and uh, a number of other artists. Uh, 
And I suppose both me, uh, Paul and myself were in our early 20s and, uh, at that point. But um, Paul had started Signals. It, it, it was originally um, a place, in a, it was originally in, in, a, in a flat in, Cro in the off Cromwell Road uh, where they, uh, and he and David Madala were living. And they converted their flat into a, into a kind of a gallery. Um, and there was a group of us that included um, Paul and myself uh, and David Madala and uh, Gustav Metzger and uh, Marcello Salvadori, who was an Italian artist working in London. Um, um, and the first title, the, the first title or name that uh, Signals had was the Center for Advanced Creative Study, <laughs> which seemed us to us to offer a bit to be very pretentious. So it got simplified to Signals, which were the, was, was the collective name of a series of uh, electric sculptures by Takis who exhibited, uh, was one of the artists who exhibited at Signal. We, uh, uh, it, so we found ourselves heading for Brazil. I'd never been there before, nor did I know anything about Brazil. But I had just been extremely impressed by the work that was being done there, which seemed to me to be in advance of most of the things I was seeing in Europe. And during that trip, we, we went to Mira Schendel's house in Sao Paulo. Uh, the, early in the day, me and Paul arrived there. Um, we came in and we spent the whole day and part of the night with Mira as she was showing us her work. Um, and we didn't finish looking at it until um, sometime in the night. And we, Mira forgot to offer us a drink or anything to eat during all this time. <laughs> and actually, I wrote kind of this struck me as so funny that I decided to, in a, I, in a letter I wrote to her, uh, I, I, I remembered this evening, and, she said, and, and in her reply she said, um, Oh, I remember very well that evening without drinking and eating. It, it, it occurs frequently, sorry, it happens frequently that I also forget sleeping, talking with friends and reading. Well, Paul, uh, Paul on the spot uh, offered her an exhibition at Signals and that, uh, and that uh, began to be planned. Um, I entered into, into a correspondence with Mira um, after, after our visit, uh, and she wrote me a number of letters which uh, have often been quoted because they seem very succinct um, explanation to me of what she was doing in her work. For example, She explained the technique of the monotypes, which was what, what she was working on at the time. Uh, and I remember her saying that her method, apart from the technical method, which um, was described yesterday, of the inked, uh, the, the inked glass and, and, the, uh, and, and, and the marks made with um, the finger and a nail or something like that, um, that she said that these monotypes were made in a, bur in a burst of activity in which she went from one sheet to another very rapidly and just this and then that. Uh, and, then, and, then that and then that would stop and she would have a period, quite a long period of just um, thinking over or, or, or doing nothing. And then a sudden burst of activity and a whole uh, sheaf of her papers would would, 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 would be drawn on. And I think that, that that is kind of evident in the, uh, the, the extreme bareness of these works. 
And of course, this raised the subject of the, of the void, which I want to return to uh, in a moment, because I think it's a very um, a, a, a way of approaching Mira's work, which is um, very uh, very rich, and also links her to uh, other artists in other countries. In a letter she wrote, she said, well, I'd, I'd, I'd written to her making an attempt to sort of um, uh, to explain why I liked her work so much. Um, and, she, and she wrote back and said, I like very much what you say about my work, that the parts disappear in the whole. I, I would say the line often just stimulates the void I doubt whether the word stimulate is right, something like that. At any rate, what matters in my work is the void, actively the void, the part relative to the whole. And then she went on to describe um, a, a more recent work of hers, uh, which was like the, the second shock that I received. Um, when she showed us the Droginius that she was making. This was 1965, and she had been making the Droginius since 1964. And of course, they were made from just rolling up and knotting together the sheets of rice paper that she was using for the monotypes. And... Uh, That fact and just the physical presence of these objects, which, for which it was very difficult to find a, a, a word or, or to, um, uh, to, to compare with anything else, uh, a number of the Droginius. And, uh, later, and later in the letter, she explained how, it came, how they came about. I started a new work, perhaps more important for myself than any former one. Sculpture, in inverted commas, in the same rice paper of the drawings. Something technically primary and very easy. And an oxi from an occidental point of view, these sculptures, this senseless word, might be seen under the perspective of a phenomenology of being having. From an oriental point of view, well, they are, they are related to Zen. Uh, and and uh, she describes uh, somebody who is going to write something about these works, and uh, I don't, uh, she, she doesn't name that person, so I don't know who it was. But anyway, he became, and I'm quoting, quite enthusiastic about my new work. But I don't know whether you at Signals will like it, for it's an o in open opposition to the permanent and the ownable. When I can afford it, I'll have it re-photographed and send you the pictures. It's interesting, this reference to when I can afford it, because in the letters that she wrote me, uh, it was always a question of whether... Uh, she had the she had the funds to come to England, for example. Whether she had the funds for 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 anything, I had the impression that she, you know, that she lived on very little. Um, and some, and I think this had a bearing, quite a strong bearing, on uh, the actual physical nature of her work. Um, for example, all the monotypes were done because she received as a gift a great quantity of Japanese paper. This is, I'm quoting her now, from a letter. I received as a gift a great quantity of Japanese paper. It tore. And then, and then I met a girl who did monotypes. 
and the material offered me the opportunity. So it's a, it, it fascinates me that, that it's a kind of ten tenuous relationship um, to materials that enabled her to, to produce work. Um, and then I had a, a third shock, which was seeing her graphic objects later on. Um, and we've seen many we've seen many pictures of them um, on the screen in the last two days. Suddenly, where there had been a very sparse line, uh, there appeared a vast teeming teeming surface uh, with letters, rudimentary signs, beginnings of letters, crowds of letters um, and I, I, I was shocked because I had associated her work with the void and the line stimulating the void and the idea of the active void. Uh, suddenly there was no void. Everything was crammed. But then I realized that, of course, the void is a, is a, is a paradoxical concept. It, it's, it's both... It's both um, empty and full. It's both nothing and everything. Um, and I, I, I knew, for example, that Lydia Clark had referred to the full emptiness uh, when also speaking of the void. And I had a quote that I, I wanted to read you um, from Indian me metaphysics, which dealt with the um, full side of the void um, and describes the, all these forms of life being generated from, um, from nothing and returning to nothing afterwards. Unfortunately, I, I, I couldn't find it, the quote, when I was leaving this morning. And this fascination with the void uh, and the, the uh, connection with Zen in Mira's work uh, seemed to link her with a broad band of artists across the world uh, at, a, at that period of the late 50s and early 60s. Uh, it was a period in which Zen um, began to have a big influence on many artists. It's not um, a phenomenon that's been very much uh, discussed in art history, I don't think. Uh, there is, I came across one book called Zen in the 50s, which attempted to do that, uh, to trace it through the work of, uh, of artists of different nationalities. Uh, but it was a, a little bit of a pedestrian book. Um, so uh, it, I think the, the, the way is still open to, uh, to, to treat this phenomenon. Um, just a simple list uh, one could make would include Yves Klein, uh, Piero Manzoni, Lucio Fontana, Takis, Madala, Soto, Tobak, Toby, um, Bern uh, Barnett Newman, John Cage, and uh, the, the Campos brothers, Nidia Clark. Elio Etisica, Sergio Camargo, Tom Sylvester Huedad, Louis Wenchia, and Mira Schendel. Well, that was just my preliminary, uh, my just sort of first effort as a list, um, which I think can be extended a lot. And uh, not, not just, just to name the artists, but um, their, their work, the work that was interrelated and um, had a kind of uh, a different sort of resonances with the uh, different artists. Uh, and that's also the reason that um, I, th I was very interested to discover that uh, Mira had made friends with Li Wenqiu 
and Dom Sylvester who had died when she was in <coughs> London when, when she was in, in London because there, re there is a, a real um, there is a real interconnection between between their ideas um, having to do uh, Lee, Lee Wenchia for example made an, uh, an event which he called the beginning and the end and Dom Sylvester wrote at one point everything material is a revelation of the unseen the ultimate the ultimate truth about truth is painted on everything material for all who can read i.e. God is known only as not this not neti I, i.e. nothing, nada, or i.e. not thing, nada, or n nothing. And Elio Wetisika made one of his penetrables um, only, only, as a <laughs> only as a project, because it was never actually realized, called nada. Uh, and in this very, this quite complex penetrable, a labyrinth, um, people would walk down a tunnel of, with metallic walls and very garish uh, lighting into an area where there would be some microphones dangling from the ceiling. And people were invited to step up to the microphone and talk about nothing. Talk about nothing. Fasc interestingly enough, this Penetral was proposed at the height of the dictatorship in Brazil, um, which seemed uh, interesting to me because he was, by concentrating on nothing, which he wanted to do as a concept in the first place, but also had a, had a, had a, an, an additional meaning, um, which was a kind of revelation critique of the sort of jargon produced by the military regime. It, it reduced that to, it nullified it in, 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 in a sense. And for Lee, for Lee and Chia, The, uh, the tiny dot, the tiny graphic dot, was uh, the beginning and end of all creation. And, uh, and although um, throughout his life, Lee tried to make his thought as accessible to others as he could, and its beauty is inseparable from its simplicity, Yet he, he was aware of the paradox involved in this for, 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 because he said, I quote, the simpler a thing is, the more likely it is to be mis misinterpreted and e or even dismissed. This tiny dot can mean all or nothing to you. So I think that's the, uh, uh, the, 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 the sort of um, climate in which in which they were working. And I think I'll end there. Thank you.